Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku, and we are in beautiful Alaska yet again. Hope you guys have been following along on our Alaskan journey this year. It's been absolutely killer. Uh, if you haven't seen any of our videos, go back and check them out. Check out all the Alaskan episodes. Um, and then today, we have a very big announcement for you. And some of you that have been watching the past few episodes might know what it is already. But we'll let you know later on. Uh, today, we're going to go do some mushroom picking. We're going to go hunt for mushrooms here in Alaska. The mushrooms pop up a little bit earlier, uh, maybe during late summer. So to, right now, should be starting to pop up. It's a perfect time for it. And hopefully, we can find some good mushrooms. But right now, we're in this muskeg area, this meadow. And we're looking for these tiny little berries. These are called nagoon berries. And uh, they're quite a little delicious treat. And Jocelyn's going to be making a pie later as well with these berries and a bunch of blueberries that we gathered yesterday. But let's go. Join us for today's adventure. So these tiny berries are just one, one fruit per plant. So look at that. And they just grow on the ground like this. Just pick them off. Should be this little dark red color. These are called nagoon berries. And uh, yeah, they're really delicious. Um, but yeah, we're gonna pick a bunch of these right now. And we'll get into the woods just right behind us. Go look for some mushrooms. I forgot if I said it or not already, but today we're making my favorite, takoyaki. Yeah, let's make sure to stay for that. It's gonna be so good, dude. All right, I think we got enough berries. Now we're gonna go look for some mushrooms along this beautiful trail next to this nice blue river. And uh, let's go see if we can find some mushrooms. Feels like the perfect time. Feels like the perfect temperature for some mushrooms. I'm thinking maybe if we're lucky, we could find some chanterelles. Maybe if we're lucky, we can also find um, I don't know, lion's mane. We've never found lion's mane. That would be that would be awesome if we found that. Uh, there's another one called bear's head tooth, which we actually found uh, a couple days ago. So I think we could find some of those again, and maybe another another surprise mushroom. We'll see. We'll see. We'll keep an eye out on this trail. That's not what we want. I think it's always a good sign to see other mushrooms though, even though they're not the ones that are, we're looking for or the edible ones. I think it's always a good sign to that we're seeing mushrooms at least. Mm -hmm. Actually, this might be like a puff ball. Hmm, I think that's a puff ball, but uh, yeah, not a hundred percent on that. I'm not gonna take this one. Just because I'm not a 100% sure. I think this might in here be a huge porcini that's way too old. Check it out. Yeah, I touched it a little bit. Right next to the Devil's Club. Yeah. I it didn't feel too bad. Oh. Pretty yeah. Bad. No, it's old. It's really old. It's all soft and. Yeah, but that's a. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a porcini. It looks like it. Well, that's a good sign. Might have porcini tonight on the menu. I've never eaten those coral mushrooms. I think they're edible. Not 100% sure. We're not going to eat them, but let me know if any of you guys have tried that. Kind of curious. They look really cool. Look at this giant tree that just looks like it just fell over. Boom, right into the river. Now we can see what the, uh, the bottom side of a tree looks like. There is this giant tree right here. But truly massive. I'm just gonna go touch it just to gain some energy from the tree. I'm not having any good luck so far. Ow! Devil's club all around. 
And this is a massive tree. Take some of its energy. Jocelyn says she's got something. Right after I touch the tree, what you got? Little shanties. You sure? Uh, cool. uh, actually, no, maybe not. No, these are like... No, these are the veins. Nope, those are gills. These are gills? Oh yeah, they are gills, dang. These I are just nice kinda... chanterelles, yeah. They I, look similar, I same color. Yeah. But, yeah, they have the gills. Not Darn. chanterelles. <laughs> False alarm. What's this one right here? Alright, this one, maybe a chanterelle. Yep, that one's a chanterelle. Found one. We got well, we got one. We got one small chanterelle. That's a start. That is a start. Oh, what's this? Oh, this was a chicken of the woods, but somebody cut it. You can see they cut right there. They beat us to it. Whoa! <laughs> what the heck? I just got freaking sucked nearly in. sucked into this tree. Here we go, guys. There's a little bit of bear's head tooth. That's what it's called. This is a delicious little mushroom. This is a nice fresh one in here. Look at that pretty. But this is a cool little mushroom. Super cool looking. Looks like they got little icicles on them. Similar to like a lion's mane, how they grow. Um, but yeah, this one is delicious. Yeah. It's okay. It's not too weird. Got one? Another chanterelle. Here we go. Here we go. Look what Jocelyn just spotted. Man, we walked right past this, I think. <laughs> we did. You guys know what that is. That right there is a porcini. Oh! Good job once again. Um, yeah, we're going to take that guy for sure. That one looks like a nice young one. It's pretty nice getting a head start on porcini season. Yeah, that's a good one. How's it feel? It's pretty firm? good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that feels quite firm. It's a good one. It's a little soft on this side though. Yeah, probably the rain. Oh, you can actually see two fish in this little pool. One's a male, one's a female, and they're doing things in there. Looks like they made a little, like a little nest, a little <laughs> pool. And these fish, by the time they're all the way up river like this, they're not really the ones that you want to eat. They're, they're getting pretty close to the, the, the end of their life. And uh, yeah, this, at this time, you just kind of let them do their thing for the next generation. Okay, those two that we've been watching, there's a third one right next to them. And he keeps trying to come in and probably try to be, you know, Mr. Steely Girl or something. <laughs> and, uh, but the other, I'm pretty sure the male just keeps snapping at him. Every time that other fish comes in, just try to get him away. Snap at him, try to bite him. Very entertaining watching these salmon. And these shirts are available on outdoorchefflife.com if you guys want to grab one there we're gonna set up right now just right out here uh, to make our takoyaki ah, it's a nice evening so this is my rice right here and I'm gonna add some soy sauce to this that should be enough and I'm gonna add some a little bit of marina as well there you go and I have this right here dehydrated porcini this is stuff that we gathered um, earlier this week and dehydrated so I'll dump all my dehydrated mushrooms right into the pot with the rice Ooh, yeah this is going to be so good we're making porcini rice I cooked up my octopus already and um, we didn't catch this one our friends gave it to us they caught it Brooks and Cameo and 
I just boiled it up for about six, seven minutes, something just short amount of time. And we'll cut it up into uh, tiny pieces that'll be good for takoyaki. Just gonna cut this right in half. And I think we'll just do about a half inch slice. Yeah, half inch slice. And that'll be, I think that'll be really good amount inside a takoyaki. Mm. Delicious. Hey. <laughs> oh, is this recording? Yes. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Just try to slurp up my octopus. I know after uh, my octopus teacher came out on Netflix, a lot of people uh, d avoid eating octopus now. But octopus is actually, I mean, it's just so good. It's so tasty. But not only that, but they live a pretty quick life. Um, depending on the type of octopus, they live from two to four years only. So it's a quick, you know, it's a quick turnaround for their life cycle, which makes it a pretty sustainable food source. And these ones that we're catching, they're basically a bycatch when you go shrimping and they end up in the traps and you bring them up. And this one in particular was a huge one. Um, and in Alaska, there's a ton of these giant Pacific octopus, which grow to be, uh, what was I reading, like 16 feet across, like from one tentacle to, to all the way to the end. And that's crazy. That's huge octopus. Also, the yield is great on an octopus. You can pretty much eat nearly close to 100% of the animal, which means there's no waste at all. So I love octopus and I'm always going to eat it. Okay, let's make the takoyaki batter. I'm just using all-purpose flour. And let's see. I have hondashi. I only have a little bit left. These ingredients are hard to come by in, uh, in Alaska. <laughs> that was in the last of it. Not skipping rocks out there. <laughs> and we're just talking about world record, how he could probably throw a world record rock skip. Jeez, it just keeps going. Do a couple eggs. Water. Water. Oh yeah. I brought a whisk. Tiny whisk. And takoyaki batter should be really thin. Let's check out Jocelyn's pie here that she made. Whoa, look at that. Mixed berry pie. Oh, it's perfectly, this is perfectly cooked here. Oh, very nice. First time using this one. All right, let's go. First batch. Better might be a little thick. I got my octopus. Just pop one into each. So first you just get it all, that a nice layer of batter. It's okay if it looks messy right now, don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything's gonna go inside these balls and it's gonna look perfect when it's done. That's why you need a good seasoned pan. Yeah. yeah. Basically you start turning them into a little circle. These are starting to look pretty good. Most of them are looking good. Looking good. Just a couple of them. Maybe some of the holes weren't seasoned too well, but it's only gonna look 
it's only gonna get better from here. I think first batch, almost done. This is Katsubushi Banano Flakes. Aonori. Got a little bit of green onion too. There it is, we got the takoyaki all done and we also have the porcini rice over here all done as well. That looks good. Porcini rice. Yeah, let's try it with some of our kelp chili crisp. <laughs> Go it. it goes good on everything, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no wrong way to enjoy it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I've been kind of teasing you guys about the kelp chili crisp for several weeks now myself and a team at barnacle foods would officially like to announce that kelp chili crisp is now available right now <laughs> right now <laughs> official drop starting now we put a lot of uh, a lot of time into it we even got in on the action here we go perfecting our kelp chili crisp <laughs> It's going down. Officially became our first batch. We made about a uh, hundred, a little bit over a hundred jars. Yeah, 105, 105 <laughs> jars. <laughs> They're gonna keep on making uh, a lot more because uh, I'm sure more than 105 of you will <laughs> want to try it. Well, I'm hoping at least. It's really just hitting me now how special this moment is for me. Uh, having Outdoor Chef Life, a brand that I created from the ground up and having our own very first product available for you guys to purchase uh, alongside Barnacle Foods, uh, who we've become amazing, great friends with, um, and I really couldn't have done it without you. It's a very special moment for me, and I thank you guys for supporting us. And this was just an idea that we had uh, at one year ago, and we did an initial R&D on the beach, trying out a little recipe, and we've developed it throughout this whole year and um, I can't believe it is now available for you guys to purchase. Incredible team effort on this. Um, the team at Barnacle did an amazing job and I really really hope that you guys uh, like it and uh, that you try one. Very thankful of this moment. Thank you guys so much. Special shout out to Rosa. She put a lot of uh, a lot of work into it as well. Collectively a lot of time and effort uh, put into this uh, kelp chili crisp a lot of thought so hope you guys enjoy it go to barnaclefoods.com and you can order it now and while you're at it might as well try their uh, hot sauce kelp pickles and all their other things salsas are good too you oh, know yeah yeah the salsa is good. very snackable <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's all pretty good well i hope you guys enjoy the kelp chili crisp let me know what you think if you order it and yeah well I guess uh that's it. Official drop. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Woo! Good work, everybody. Good work. Cheers. Cheers. Woo! Woo! Bye. <laughs> We're going to keep on making these takoyakis tonight and uh, just enjoy the evening. Beautiful, beautiful night in, uh, in Juneau. Mm. It's good? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's ice cream on top. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's so good. That's amazing. The crust is perfect. <laughs> Ooh. <Dang. laughs>